Pop Tabs, keeping tabs on all your pop culture topics. I'm your host, Matthew Yap, and joining me today is... Maisie Brammer. And... Chi-Chi Shinkin. So, guys, d and D's bad, and not just the nerd board game, yeah. but also the writers of the nerd TV show. Oh. Yeah. So, Game of Thrones uh, writers David Benoff and D.B. Weiss, affectionately known as D&D, recently left a deal with Disney to make a new Star Wars trilogy. Uh, basically, they cite uh, some scheduling conflicts because they just made a really big uh, exclusivity deal with Netflix, and so because of that, they were unable to be a part of the franchise any longer. Uh, this may not be the case any longer, though, because according to a Vanity Fair reporter, the two were actually silently fired after a negative reaction to the Game of Thrones final seasons. Uh, because if you don't remember, people really hated the end of Game yeah. of Thrones. Like, that's all anyone said for like a month. Yeah, like I didn't even watch Game of Thrones and I was walking around like, why did they do that? Like, <laughs> it was a big thing. It was a big thing. So what are your initial thoughts on all of this? Well, um, first of all, I've never seen a lick of Game of Thrones. However, a lick. I, ha I did see the last few minutes of the season series finale on Twitter. It's rough. Mm. Um, mm. To me, I feel like, because they're, they're book series, it's a book series, correct? Yes, and unfortunately the last books have not been written, but the show kept going anyways. Mm. Ah, yes. Um, <laughs> but like, what I was like reading up on, it, it was so critically acclaimed until this final season and people were getting angry. My parents said they liked it, um, and other people I've talked to said that they enjoyed it, but then that's just a small, very small majority. My, like, thought on, like, people getting angry at Game of, like, the writers of Game of Thrones just for this ser series or whatever the heck, um, <laughs> it's just people getting angry for not seeing what they wanted to see. It's like all, I'm like, to me, books are different than movies. That's why I'm not that angry about like the Marvel movies changing things up. Like, mm. except Wolverine, X-Men Origins Wolverine. That movie was not Trash. good at all. <laughs> um, but that's for like a different reason. But like they took with their source material, but they changed it up. To me, I don't understand why people are super, super angry. I can understand some frustration. Don't get me wrong, because um, killing off one of the dragon women. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the only dragon. <laughs> the woman. dragon woman. Um, I can understand. I can understand people getting angry at like some choices that were made, but I don't know. <laughs> I think it's beyond even the choices. I did watch all the seasons of Game of Thrones, and I it's just like a a big quality drop in mm, my opinion. Okay. It just. It, the writing stopped being consistent. Uh, basically, it seemed like they did know where they wanted the show to end, and I would have been fine where they ended the show. It's just to get there, they didn't really follow any logical line of thinking and things like that. And so personally, I think uh, this sort of idea that uh, the Game of Thrones directors were fired because people just hated the end of the series so much, I think it makes sense because, mm -hmm. uh, like we said, they were for a long time following along with books, and then it seems as though as soon as the books were removed and they didn't have something to follow anymore, yeah. it just got bad. It just fell apart. I saw I saw a tweet or something saying that um, George R. R. Martin now knows how to end the book series because <laughs> of the whole TV show. Just follow, do the exact opposite <laughs> of what the TV series did. Um, I, like TT, have never seen it, a lick of Game of Thrones, um, and I'm not going to start now because apparently the ending's bad, um, which I did know. Um, but yeah, I I am not surprised that everyone like went kind of crazy because like I, like I feel like people that watch Game of Thrones like they're in the same vein as like I don't know like uh, like Sherlock fans and like that kind of stuff and like we all know like the cringy super nature, super yeah, hulak. super hulak, Ooh. like. And I feel like Game of Thrones is like a little bit like classier, like a little bit a better sh a better show. Um, but like I'm just like if if the fans were that mad, like I'm sure like the network took note. So yeah. Do you think it's fair for writers to be fired from a project that they're already on just because of a previous project of theirs is getting negative reception? Not really. I mean, well, yes and no. Because first of all. 
It depends on what kind of negative reception it is. Yeah. If it's more so negative reception that's like them not being inclusive, them being racist, them being like homophobic, all that stuff, yes, absolutely fire them. There's a reason. But if the reason is because People didn't enjoy the last season of their show yeah. because, yes, the quality wasn't good or um, the costumes or whatever. It just didn't end the way people wanted it to. Then no, like that that doesn't re- like there should be a better reason for them yeah. to get fired. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I definitely that that struck me as kind of odd uh, when I read that. It made me think like maybe there was reasons like mm-hmm. that that were going on behind the scenes that we don't know yeah, about. Exactly. You know, but yeah, I'm I'm surprised. But like I said, I never watched it, and yeah. I'm not really a big fan of those guys, so I'm not I'm not too mad. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, I I get it, and I think it's fair because like. You're only as, there's that saying that you're only as good as the last thing you've done. And so like, even though, yeah, we had it for so long, so good, but now this is now what you're known for. They are, no, unfortunately, yeah. I, I don't yeah. know if it's fair. I can see that, yeah. I yeah. don't know if it's fair, but they're like not known as like the Game of Thrones writers who did so well. Now they're the Game yeah. of Thrones writers who ruined the <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. Um, what I will say though is they really didn't help their case at all. Um, so they've been avoiding some public appearances uh, ever since the show ended because fans haven't been happy with them. However, uh, they finally made a public appearance uh, and it was a little strange. Uh, basically, <laughs> they were being asked a lot of questions about the ending of Game of Thrones on a panel, and some quotes are. We don't know why he trusted us with his life's work in reference to George R. R. Martin uh, because they didn't know what they were doing. Everything we could make a mistake with, we did. <laughs> uh, script, casting, costume, everything. Uh, he was saying that uh, it was essentially an expensive film school for them because they oh didn't God. really know how to make a TV show. And so the fact that they just got hired on miraculously was pretty nice and that they learned a bunch. Uh, And essentially they just went through this panel more or less stating that they just blundered boldly through the entirety of the show and that they really had no clue what they were doing. And this upset a lot of people. Uh, one of the biggest criticisms that they said that uh, they wanted to remove fantasy elements from the show because people don't like fantasy and they wanted to appeal to football players and moms and not just the nerds. <laughs> the two genders, football players and moms. moms. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, people were pretty upset with their panel. What are your initial thoughts on it? Um, to me, like when I was looking at it and reading what they said, it felt like me in class when my teacher asked me to answer a question, I have no idea like what's going on. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I just, I did my best. This is an expensive um, film school. This is, I'm sorry, yeah, it, it really is. Um, yeah, I, it's like, it's, it touches some veins for sure, because like there are like so many people and like uh, film schools around the country that like would love this opportunity and these two guys just kind of walk in and they're like, hey. Um, so <laughs> I could see how people could read this and feel like, kind of like, like specifically like offended, I guess. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, but it, in the same kind of vein, like it, it clearly like worked out for them because the first um, several seasons of the show um, like went really well. So yeah. like the learning by doing kind of thing, it's not like they should be you know exiled and fired for that, but right. it's something to think about in the future for sure. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I also wanted, I was like, when I was researching this, I wanted to find the actual video from the panel and there's no video evidence. Right. Mm. So all we have is just like a tweet thread. So what I wanted to do was, because I read these quotes and I was like, maybe they were joking, maybe they were just like, haha, like we, we don't know what we're doing, mm. like that, because I wanted to see like how the tone of their voices were. Yeah. Because obviously you can't convey emotion through text. Right. right. Um, so I don't know, I don't know how they, like if it was joking, if they were serious or not. So that's what I was trying to do. And I was, the only thing I got came close to was like a Nerdist or some some sort of YouTube video of a woman commenting on it. But yeah. I do agree mm-hmm. with you um, on all of that. But that's, I just wanted to see the tone of their voices. Yeah, I would have loved to hear that too. It was, it was mm-hmm. a little sketchy, but yeah. I think some of the, like, the specific things they said probably yeah. pointed it towards oh, that yeah. direction. But. Yeah, so I also, yeah, we all spent a lot of time trying to find a video and I also wanted to know, and because I think reading them, I don't see them going up there and just being like, <laughs> I'm an yeah, idiot. Exactly. Yeah. So like, I'm like sure- caught with their pants down almost. Yeah, like, I'm sure they were kidding, Yeah. but 
I don't think they should have been is the problem. Yeah. I sort of still fault them for it because when you go up and people are already criticizing you and saying that you yeah. ruined the show and then you're just like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. We didn't know what we were doing. Haha, <laughs> joke, joke. Like people are actually mad and this yeah. would be the time to start oh, like yeah. being yeah. like, oh no, no, this was the vision. Yeah. I think they could have gotten away with it because like you said, they, for five seasons of not <laughs> yeah. doing what they were doing, they killed did, like, it. They did like really expensive improv with other people. Yeah, and they did <laughs> like great years. with it. And so I truly think that if they could have just not joked about it and taken it a little more seriously, they probably would have been better off. Right. Because frankly, they just, I think, made it look sort of bad. Do you think it's fair if you don't know what you're doing to still enter into a project? Yes. Because I've always lived by the motto, or just recently, fake it until you make it. Mm -hmm. And even like I will look through like when this is me looking through like applications for internships and jobs it might say like Photoshop Illustrator Adobe <laughs> After Effects experience I have two out of the three um, mastered hmm. but I mean that's where you like yes I can do this and then you learn as you go however I mean I'm a college student and I'm still learning they Unfortunately, um, they're big boys. They're yeah. big boys yep. in their big boy panties in their big boy <laughs> writing rooms. Um, so I mean, yes, you can fake it until you make it until like a certain point where you should at least know how to do the things that you're hired to do. Right. Yeah. Right. And I I remember reading um, in like some of the notes about this that. Um, like they like invented just like whole like halves of episodes to like learn about the characters and like learn how to do things, which yeah. is like really like you can fake it till you make it, but like what? Yeah. <laughs> like that seems a little crazy to me. Um, but yeah, I I do agree with what you're saying. Um, like everyone has to fake it a little bit to like get in, especially in this kind of business. But um, I think that with them, they just like they were kind of like ushered in and like you know just kind of like got through probably, I don't know, just on things that other people wouldn't have. So it just seems a little sketchy, um, but yeah. No, I actually, I, so I agree with you on the guys faking it part, but I don't think you should ever have to stop faking it personally, <laughs> unless you're like a doctor, in which case okay. probably know what you're doing. Please, I, I don't want to go into a hospital surgery room <laughs> and they're like, ah, some, I know how to do this. Some guys <laughs> just like, ah, appendectomy, learn by doing. Like, oh my gosh. But no, I truly think that like, 90% of life is just kind of like saying you know how to do things. This podcast, which has now won several awards, was born by me pretending I knew how to run a podcast. And here we are. Uh, so I think it's perfectly fair. HBO hired them and then they ran with it and they did great yeah. for like yeah. several seasons. Yes. Yeah. In fact, weirdly, the more experience they got, the worse they got. So like... Maybe stop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's perfectly fair and it's led them to a Netflix exclusivity deal and like a lot of movie deals. And so in a, almost a selfish way, like, yeah, they messed up a TV show because they didn't know what they were doing, but they made so much money. Yeah. Right. They I feel like if... so I've, much money. Yeah. And I, like... Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, you're okay. I just, I feel like if their attitude about it was a little bit more like that, like kind of wholesome, yeah. it would have been, would have gone better. But I think they ruined it for themselves. They did. But they got the opportunity and then they fully ruined it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be, t to be a little nice to them, they do have seven seasons of great content under right. their belt and just right. like a small one, like one season. That's it was like good. six episodes. It was yeah. a short season. It, yeah. They just couldn't do six So like to be, to be fair to them, they've done pretty well with the series. Yeah. And personally, I don't think we should cancel them because Obama says canceling is bad. Oh, if no. you don't know, <laughs> former President Barack Obama recently criticized the use of call-out culture. Call-out culture basically refers uh, to this sort of online movement and kind of social idea that when a celebrity messes up, they are canceled. And what they mean by that is we no longer support them, we don't want them to be at work anymore, et cetera, et cetera. And so Obama said that call-out culture is bad activism. Uh, he recognizes that the world's a messy place Place and people make big mistakes, but he says that uh, young people, particularly young people in college, take on this attitude of, quote, the way of me making change is to be as judgmental as possible about other people. And he goes on to say that this is accelerated by social media. So what are your guys' initial thoughts on this? 
Um, well, first and foremost, I just want to get out of the way. I don't think cancel culture is a thing. I don't think it's real. I think it's uh, like super sensationalized, and I think that it's used by people at the top to justify um, like their wrongdoings and their um, their setbacks. Um, and I feel like um, to what to his point about um, that it's accelerated by social media, like it definitely is. Um, but um, like pre Twitter, like we've um, we've like never had the kind of platform as people to like call people out like this. So it's so it's just happening. And I think whether to like deem it good or bad or someone's canceled or someone's not canceled, it's like it's a little bit early to see that. And I yeah. think people are just being a little reactionary and saying it's completely like bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I I see it in a different perspective because I do see because like I'm I have. I agree with President Obama on this, or former President Obama. I love you, President <laughs> um, Obama. Please come back. Please come back. <laughs> and um, I do see, when I'm going through like my social media timelines, especially Twitter, I don't go on Tumblr anymore, because I don't know how that trash <laughs> no website one should, is. No one should go on Tumblr. No. <laughs> Tumblr's around. Please don't. Um, but I do see people like getting angry. Like when um, Ellen was talking about um, George Bush yes. and, mm -hmm. and all that, like people were getting angry at her. I was like, she's just stating her own opinion. She's just talking. She like, just listen to people and don't just start judging them on their actions like mm -hmm. super quickly. Cause like, even he said like, people like, like don't like young people. Yes, I do see, I, and I do see it a lot. You guys can like, disagree with me mm -hmm. but i do i do actually like see people getting angry at one another for different like opinions or like for especially like celebrities who have different opinion disagreeing opinions with um with them like just saying like oh you said uh, blah 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 i'm going to just like we're gonna cancel you or whatever right yeah. so like i do i do see it and like that's why i don't like going like I would rather just scroll through my timeline and see a TikTok of <laughs> someone dressed up as like a fish and just going around and <laughs> drinking too. water out of water fountains. Me too. Um, then like seeing someone say like an, an entire thread of like someone saying, well, so-and-so is wrong because of this and we should just start bashing all of them. Drag her. Just start <laughs> dragging them, yes. Like it, like, Get her. Guys. <laughs> Guys. So I'm a bit in the middle, and I think cancel culture totally exists. Yes. And I think it's good. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I okay. agree. Okay. So <laughs> I love that. you, President Obama. But I disagree with you in the sense that it's it's lazy activism, uh, because I kind of see this as people do. Uh, like you've said, we have this like platform that allows people to call out the things that they see, the injustice in the world, the wrongdoings of people, right. so, so easily nowadays. And so I do think it's absolutely accelerated by social media. Uh, that being said, people do messed up things. And I'm going to take uh, Kevin Spacey, for example. See, that's... He's the only person that's ever actually been canceled. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, I that's say, justifiable. Yeah. Yeah, and no, that, that's a rough one, because we love Kevin Spacey. Yeah, kind of sad. But he was a bad person who was doing bad things. And so, frankly, he shouldn't work anymore. And so when people oh, yeah. go wild and like, blah, 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 I think that's fair. Yeah. What I think is the thing about cancel culture is it's only effective so long as people actually agree with it. Because a lot of times I think we get caught up in this idea of like, a thousand people on Twitter has said that Taylor Swift's canceled? Oh no. And yeah. if you actually look through this, there's like 10,000 tweets and 9,000 of them are people being like, why was Taylor Swift canceled? Like, it's, yeah. I think people are, I think, uh, sort of exaggerating what yes, cancel culture is. For sure. Last night I thought Halsey had been canceled because I saw Halsey is over party trending and it was just it was K pop stands. It was just K pop stands. It was just the K pop I saw that too. Stands. I was like, oh my God, like as I was writing this, I was like, oh no. Um, but yeah, I. I agree with you. I think that I think in some vein it exists, but I think that to the magnitude that people in power act like it exists mm -hmm. is a little bit like crazy. Yeah. Because like Obama is like he's a former president. Obviously, he's he's super rich, he's super powerful, he's super um, like well respected. And I don't think anybody's out here like trying to cancel him. It's more like people are super um, super good at like um, what am I trying to say? Um, sorry. 
Dragging. They're good at dragging. Yeah, like we we we're on Twitter like all day. Like we literally just like see things and point them out. Mm -hmm. And as a result of people like actually like being canceled because of it, I don't think that ever happens. Yeah, honestly. As someone I see an example of a lot that gets like criticized as uh, for being a victim of cancel culture was Brett Kavanaugh, and mm -hmm. I, I kind of agree with you in the sense that like. Wow, was he canceled? <laughs> he's a Supreme Court justice. Yeah, like he he's did... still doing the thing. Yeah. yeah. So like I, I do think a lot of times just because somebody is being called out on Twitter and being canceled by Twitter, I don't think you necessarily see a lot of real world effects. All you see is a lot of negativity online. Yeah. Which in its own vein is kind of gross. Yeah. Um and so I guess that almost plays into President Obama's point. Do you think cancel culture is effective? Because as as we've pointed out and as TT pointed out, all people do is yell at this person online, but then nothing really happens. <laughs> not effective at all because it's just I just I just see like picture in my mind because it's not our like I don't feel like any of us have ever like done any of this stuff, but I just imagine like a sixteen year old just like ah yeah you're canceled <laughs> you're because canceled. I don't like you like. Uh. I tried to cancel everyone who's involved with the Justice League movie. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> That's justified. And you should be able to. <laughs> that is, <laughs> yeah. To. See. But yeah, no, you're correct. That like, yeah, I, it's, I don't think people understand that just because Halsey's over party got trending. Yeah. That, like, <laughs> imagine being like 60, looking at Twitter, like, oh my god. Like, Halsey, no. <laughs> no. But, but like, yeah. it doesn't really do anything because I'll be honest. Just because a lot of K-pop gifts were tweeted out, yeah. doesn't mean that Halsey's <laughs> album's not going to do well. <laughs> unfortunately. Right. Unfortunately. Didn't the same thing happen with Lil Nas X or something? Yeah, he got canceled mm. for something. I can't even remember nice. now. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens. It was so like often. a bunch of K-pop things too. <laughs> yeah. It's always the K-pop stands, man. Oh, wait, Stan Luna. They're really about to cancel pop tabs because I'm calling out K-pop stands. Oh my god. That'll happen. Oh dear. Someone check had check to do Twitter it. moments tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We're screwed. But do you think it's effective? I I don't think it's super effective. Um, I think it's only um, effective if someone's been canceled like in real life. So like yeah. Kevin Spacey, like Harvey Weinstein, um, Trump, like he's not fully been canceled because he's still the president, but I think that most of the news media hates him. So I think that, um, yeah, it's not it's not super effective, honestly. Yeah. yeah, it's more of just like a trend and something to do, honestly. <laughs> it really is <laughs> just something to do. Like young yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that being said, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are currently kind of running on campaigns that there's a lot of issues and failures in the government that need called out. Mm -hmm. And we often see that they are being called out by young people and like things that are problematic in government and in American politicians. We see called out a lot in these sort of cancel threads. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that is actually a good thing that is almost promoting kind of like a social awareness in a sense? Right. Um, when So when President Obama says call it culture is like bad activism, like I, I, I see where he's coming from, but at the same time it's like this kind of movement is getting more people interested in politics, like especially people that are um, fans of like Sanders and Warren. So like if they're gonna like get on Twitter and like do the digging and like kind of expose these politicians that have been going on check for a while, like, I'm all for that, Yeah, honestly. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, I'm not, like, when I go on Twitter, I don't usually, like, look for, like, the politics and yeah. stuff. I look for the dank memes or just <laughs> stuff to just distract me from the politics of Valid. everyday right. life. Um, but, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. That's all I have to say on that before I... Say something that's like stupid. <laughs> nah, you're fine. Uh, no, in the kind of a similar vein to call out culture is good. I think, I think slacktivism is a bit of a gatekeeping term. I feel like a lot of times it's again used by people in power who are like, well, what are you doing by tweeting about it? You're informing people. Yeah, what you're doing. exactly. exactly. Um, and like, genuinely with as many problems as there are in the world we can't all go to a protest for every single issue unfortunately and so yeah, sometimes and it's cold it, yeah, it gets expensive <laughs> it does and so sometimes all you can do is inform people like hey in case you were wondering Jeffrey Epstein was murdered <laughs> like, that's something I was I would like to know yeah yeah <laughs> sometimes that's all you can do in case you guys are wondering Jeffrey Epstein's uh, autopsy reports uh, show <laughs> closer to a homicide than a suicide look into that Some, in something time. to think about something to think about yeah. um, <laughs> but that being said I I don't think it's quite as much as you could be doing. So if all you really are doing yeah. is, you know, informing people, that's not great. Yeah. But as long as you're voting, yeah, that's what vote. matters. Please <laughs> vote. Speaking of voting, 
our elections are going to look a little different, kids. <laughs> because Twitter, the social media site, has recently announced that it will be banning all political ads from their site starting on November 2nd. And this comes right after Facebook fell under fire for allowing unchecked information uh, in their political ads. So what are your initial thoughts on this? I like this. Um, mm -hmm. And like I stated earlier, I go on Twitter to escape <laughs> all of the politics and of everyday life. So honestly, I am all for this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all for it as well because um, Facebook um, initially like, came under fire for um, like allowing people to like promote like fake political ads. Yeah. So before that like spreads to Twitter, I'm glad that they're um, shutting it down. Mm -hmm. And like TT said, I just want to see memes. Yeah. <laughs> like if or you like, want news, cute dogs. yeah, I can go to like Yahoo. Like I just want memes from Twitter, man. <laughs> you better like, say you could go to Yahoo News. It is, and then I stop myself. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to 2013, gang. I, I get all my news from Twitter. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, and that's why I do find it slightly problematic in the sense that a mm. lot of people, Twitter is their main like news source. Yeah. Mm. And so if you remove this sort of ability to get political ads, I think that that's almost doing harm to people because it, Twitter doesn't have to just be a silly place. It can be a place for news and informative. And so when you take away the political ads, I think it's harmful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think it also, but people that are um, running can still like tweet about their policies yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not like completely shut down. Um, and it also like may give like um, like third party candidates and like lesser known candidates like the same kind of like even playing ground. Yeah. Because they're not like being bombarded by like all these huge political ads that are being promoted. Right. Also. And that is something that uh, Twitter chief executive Jack Dorsey uh, in the thread that he announced this, he basically said that they believe that political messages should be earned and not bought. And so do you mm -hmm. think that's kind of where they're coming from? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can certainly appreciate that. Um, that being said, I don't think it quite solves the issue because, mm. yeah, so Twitter ads aren't expensive, frankly. Yeah. Um, they're not. And mm. what it really comes down to is I don't think it's a money thing at all because in terms of, like we said, like the politicians can still tweet. They can yeah. still do that. And so mm -hmm. all they have to do is now pay a marketing team to go tweet at the right time and tweet right. towards the right people and use the right hashtags. Right. It just looks better. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's more of a vanity decision on Twitter's part. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I definitely feel that. Um, I feel like, especially like, yeah, from like the heat Facebook got, like Twitter wants to be deemed as like this like pure liberal We're the good site. Guys. We're the good guys, yeah. And it's like, but also like, just get rid of the Russian bots on Twitter. Like, yeah. do that first. Like, I'll watch political ads all day if I don't have to be bombarded. Like, not me specifically, but um, yeah, I, I, I do think it is a bit of a vanity play, but I also think it's a step in the right direction because the intentions are right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, especially since. I know we're gonna get into this, but like the fate after the Facebook thing, um, I definitely like. I agree with ev with both of your guys's, but like, even like they can if they still want to reach like an audience and like they still want to quote unquote host an ad, just tweet. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, like tweet like the president does it all the time. Like just tweet. Like Be yeah. Sure. I mean, if you're I have him so muted. Even if you want to like <laughs> add like a graphical element that's not specifically an ad, post like a, a GIF or something of like the actual like a pre like person who's running. Like right. they yeah. can, s there's like, there's loopholes for everything yeah. guys. Right. And like in 2016, Hillary Clinton ran her campaign on memes. Yeah. So like, let's just bring it back. Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. I want some of that back. No, <laughs> genuinely, yeah. Like the exact same thing you would have made a promoted tweet. You can still tweet that out. You oh, can yeah. make fancy graphs. You can make a video mm -hmm. calling people out. Whatever it you want. It just would be reaching everyone. Yeah, you just can't pay for it. Right. Yeah. And if it gets right. enough retweets, it will then reach it everybody. Saves you money. It does save you money. It saves you like hundred bucks. Oh. Hundred bucks and make it an election. <laughs> 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 but um, and so yeah, I. I don't think it's huge. I think it is, like you said, just I, it's a direct response to Facebook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So kind of jumping into them, uh, if you want to watch last week's pop dev, we discuss it in a longer length. Uh, basically, Facebook is currently allowing ads on their site that are political <laughs> ads that have unchecked information. So that basically means if a politician wants to create an ad that says Tulsi Gabbard uh, is actually running and she's a bat, uh, she's a secret <laughs> bat. Somebody can make that yes. ad. 
obviously that's not true, but Facebook will allow you to say it and uh, pay mm -hmm. to promote that. And so a lot of people will see that Tulsi Gabbard is secretly a bat. A bat. <laughs> Sorry. That's not okay. It's not. It's not. No. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the conclusion a lot of people have come to, is that it's not okay. And a lot of people have come to the conclusion that Twitter, it is okay. And so do you think that this will cause Facebook to kind of reevaluate, or do you think they won't care? I honestly think that Facebook is going to stick with their decision to, like, keep, allow the lies. Because, um, like, this stuff has happened in the past, like, with, like, the 2016 election, the same thing was going on. And, like... I mean, Trump got elected, so like worst possible outcome, and they still didn't learn their lesson. So, and Mark Zuckerberg seems pretty like hell bent on like keeping it the way it is, yeah, and defending free speech. So, right. I mean, to go off of that, maybe, maybe it might. Like, I'm I'm looking at this from like a positive perspective for Facebook, because I just want everyone to just not be angry at each other. So I'm hoping <laughs> that this will spark like ah. Twitter's doing this, mm. people are actually kind of happy with mm. this decision. People aren't happy with our decision. Maybe we need to reevaluate <laughs> how it goes. We and have lying, these two pieces of information. <laughs> yes. How do they go together? <laughs> and lying isn't okay, guys. So like debatable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I'm I'm hoping. Like, I'm hoping that Mark Zuckerberg will see. Well, like, it will warm his lizard heart. I knew you were going to say that. And, and just like, <laughs> hey, maybe maybe I should reevaluate everything. Maybe I should re 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 whatever. Maybe I should do this. I, I think Facebook was pretty locked in until... I mean, they've got nothing but backlash. And Twitter's, like, received, like pretty much just praise. There's some outliers that we'll get into, but for the most part, people are really happy with Twitter. And so maybe I would like to think that like, hey, if people hate us for this and like them for that, won't it be good? Because I think their original logic was that, oh, well, if we take away ads, people will cry, like like you said, like yeah. free speech. Yeah, um, free but speech. <laughs> we've seen for the most part, people are pretty okay with it and they understand that it's not a free speech issue. It's just more of a like, we don't want to allow ads. Yeah, and also like the issue keeps unfolding and like, I feel like now is the time people are like, more ads are like being put out. So yeah. like maybe as the situation unfolds, they'll see like, how damaging the lies are, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, we totally need to remove this. Twitter right. did. Right. I mean, if they want to continue doing ads, maybe not lie. <laughs> just don't lie. This whole thing could really be solved if they were just like, yes, we will fact check political ads. No, oh. seriously. That's, yeah. And it's so easy oh, to just fact check. We're journalists, we do it all the time. Oh, it's not hard. But lies are free speech, TT. Ah. TT hates lies. I thought we. I hate that. lies. I hate lies. <laughs> No, and so getting into kind of the only backlash Twitter did receive, uh, they did catch some people who were saying free speech. Uh, specifically, uh, people on the right felt that this might be a pointed attack at Donald Trump. Uh, specifically, Brad Pascal, the campaign manager for Donald Trump, said, quote, Twitter just walked away from hundreds of millions of dollars of potential revenue, a very dumb decision for their <laughs> stockholders. Will Twitter also be stopping ads from biased liberal media outlets who will now run unchecked as they have obvious political content to attack Republicans? Yeah, yeah, uh, actually, that's kind of what they said. Yeah, that? yeah. And no one can do political ads, yeah. but we'll discuss your point anyways. Um, do you think that this was sort of a pointed attack or that it was specifically targeting one side of the political spectrum? Um, no, and if the Republicans are the ones that are lying, then they deserve to be targeted. Also, this guy tweets just like Donald Trump, he can does. I say? It's impressive. Like, like, the chicken or the egg? Like, who started tweeting like that first? Like, I'm about to just start whitelist, like, blacklisting the word, like, dumb, because I can't read any more of this stuff anymore. <laughs> they don't know any other adjectives. That's true. That's true. But yeah, I, I don't think it was, like, some kind of pointed attack that he's yeah. claiming at all. I don't, I agree with you. And, like, as for someone who does think more on the right side of everything, mm -hmm. I don't see, I do not see this as a pointed attack towards yeah. either side. No. I think mm -hmm. it's more so them just, like, hey, like, fa like, we don't want to put out political ad like we don't want to start doing this so more people like we saw how it didn't work for facebook right and mm -hmm. everything so we're gonna try to go in a different direction i don't i do not see this as a pointed attack and no. honestly like 
yes, I hope that they do silence both, like, yeah, like both sides, like, because there's there's bad people, like there's there's just idiot people on both sides of the spectrum, <laughs> even idiot people like I'm I in the White House, <laughs> and they're liars. <laughs> okay, um, I'm an idiot sometimes, <laughs> but like. No, I don't. I like. I don't agree with with Brad. I don't at all. Like, he, they're not. It was not trying to silence anyone, mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. I'm going to play the most far-reaching devil's advocate. Oh, God. Even this is only vaguely. Oh God. Maybe <laughs> what the criticism could be is <laughs> one of the people who gets caught in lies a lot happens to be a current Republican president. What? And so maybe by saying we don't want people to lie on our platform, that could be sort of pointed. And also, Mr. Trump has gotten in a lot, he's caught a lot of flack for how often he uses Twitter. Yeah. And so maybe people would be like, ah, he lies on Twitter a lot, this is attacking him. Which, like, not really, because, again, it's not like we were like, only Republicans can't do political ads. We said no political yeah, ads. no one. And so, like, as, as maybe, maybe when they were in the boardroom thinking about, like, should we allow a political ad? And they were like, ah, yeah, Donald Trump lies a lot. Maybe that came up, but probably not. But I can, yeah. maybe, that's maybe. all I can give I you, mean, Brad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, I don't dislike our president super much, but I don't agree with how much I don't agree with some of the stuff that he just to quote my grandmother he's stupid on social media um and we but should cancel like, him it's it, it, it's just like yeah and like I agree with you like maybe they're like you know what like maybe maybe we need to like dial this back a little bit <laughs> pull um, back from what they're doing even even to me it's it's a lot yeah. <laughs> at least stop it's him from lot. tweeting in all caps and saying the word dumb can i can if we get those lock? two things can we, i can d live with it i really can <laughs> but how will people know that you're screaming and dying during like a post oh, trust okay. me i always know you're screaming dumb. <laughs> <laughs> always. just put a microphone <laughs> we'll just assume he's screaming yeah that being said what are your closing thoughts on this or anything else we talked about today? Today. Um, cancel culture. Yeah, I want someone to cancel me. Can you? I, Canceled. I'll do it okay. right now. Okay. okay. And it's that simple because it's not. It's not real. So. That's all it takes. <laughs> uh, I think Twitter. You made a good move. Barack Obama, I get your move. And d, &D <laughs> you've made a lot of weird moves. But <laughs> that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been your host, Matthew. You have to know me today was... Maisie Brammer. And... T.T. Shankin. Thanks for watching. Oh, this no. episode is sponsored by Social Chess, no. the app. It's not, but it could be Social Chess. Would you like to? I missed a, fresh I missed a big chunk of all shit.